Hello, my friend. How you doing? Oh, thanks. <laughs> Good. Are you at the school? Yeah, yeah, I'm at school. It's working a little bit. <laughs> um, so, as you can see, yeah. um, there in the document you sent me in 2013, they had already had Cold Fusion, HHO, Browns Gas being proposed. But I didn't saw it from 2013. Sorry. Yeah, it doesn't matter. The point we're 2014, I think it was. The, the point is, yeah. is those things have already been presented, and they're still going to dump it in the ocean, right? So yeah. you know, so so the point is, is that um, obviously the argument wasn't convincing enough. Now we have a scenario where um, uh, I think I, I'm going to I'm I'm calling the title of the proposal remediation of tritium by way of ball lightning induced coherent nuclear transmutation. Okay, and I, I will okay. lead I will lead on Matsumoto's realization that it's ball lightning. Okay. Uh, and that it forms these uh, mesh-like clusters and that the clusters are itonic and that they have these uh, neutrino, uh, uh, anti-neutrino uh, and, um, sorry, electron, positron and neutrino uh, structure. But that mm -hmm. this crystal structure has been observed in the peer-reviewed paper by uh, Bogdanovich et al. So we have a peer-reviewed paper showing the structure caught on film, and they are saying that this is like ball lightning. This is a, possibly a structure of ball lightning. Then I will show that we've captured that same structure on an Amasa vibrator plate that, that's been observed by, by uh, 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 um, uh, Takaaki Matsumoto. And that in a ball lightning reactor, um, generating reactor, we've observed it on inside of these spheres where it would appear it's consuming matter and converting it to carbon, which is what he observed. And then I will show his carbon ball, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, the point mm -hmm. being is then I will lead into the fact that the US Air Force said that this is a way to do fusion. It's happening in nature. And if we could ever master it, it would do fusion. And mm -hmm. I will link into the various other things that talk about the, the coherent nature of the inside skin. Then I will show the 10 yen coin that has actually mm -hmm. got the thing cut out in a uh, one side cutout and, and not on the other side, showing the, the vortex there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then I will show that we've achieved exactly the same thing using uh, plasma um, mm -hmm. in, in the reactor with copper, uh, the exact same okay. cutout, um, and so forth. And so essentially what I'm saying is that the, the idea is that the binding energy is higher than any other nucleon and that it basically rips matter apart and it reorganizes it into mm -hmm. safe elements, uh, typically. Yep. Um, and um, so, so, and, and that the, the tests on um, the calcium uh, carbonate was mm -hmm. because it has carbon, it has oxygen, and it has calcium. Calcium is what yep. everything fissions and fusions to, and we'll show an, a, a spread of the literature like I did on, on the weekend. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Car carbon is necessary to raise the temperature of a Mars gas or HHO because mm -hmm. uh, for whatever reason, it raises the temperature. <laughs> it almost doesn't matter. It just does. <laughs> it raises the thermal temperature. And that allows the process to... Hold on, I've got someone sending me messages. Okay. Oh, dear. Okay, it doesn't matter. Um, and... Um, so raising the temperature and that we demonstrated with with an optical thermometer, but not very well because it's, it's not meant to temp, do that no. temperature. But because it does limelight, we know from the literature that limelight is achieving in excess of the temperature at which Parkamov, uh, it says, uh, is producing cold neutrinos. And then... I have uh, Parkinson's book here, and then the book, the, the um, 2006 paper by Savatomova, which connects the production of cold neutrinos with uh, um, uh, various dineutronic uh, reactions, um, uh, cluster decays of uh, alpha particles, and cluster decays of carbon particles, and uh, um, that 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 requires uh, the production of itons. Um, uh, as per Matsumoto, and uh, mm -hmm. and so and we've observed the production of carbon in various interacted systems um, with, with metals interacted with uh, HHO and Brown's gas, 
and that we've observed alpha conjugate nuclei in both titanium and, and um, things. So, yep. And then I'll just refer to other literature that, that has observed the alpha conjugate nuclei. And so essentially what Savatomova's paper is doing with her colleagues is it's connecting itons, which are uh, the structure of ball lightning, to the reactions that are actually observed. And in the end, it doesn't matter. The calcium is resilient. It can absorb a hell of a lot yep. of neutrons. One of the reactions that they propose in that paper is actually that, and get this, it's an observed reaction in an experiment by Iwamura, the Japanese guy mm -hmm. who used to work for Mitsubishi in the time that the proposals were made that you sent me for potential okay. solutions to um, uh, the t tritium water. Okay, so Iromura has done these calcium oxide layers with palladium deuteride and seen transmutations. So for whatever okay. reason, it's proven and replicated that, that calcium oxide plays a role in transmutation. Okay, that's proven. But he, he, did, he did the proposal over there for, for that? So. I don't know what he did. It doesn't matter. The point is it's in the literature that a Japanese person that was responsible for trying to find solutions, this guy Iwamura, yeah. and this is the paper that's yeah. being referred to yeah. by Sabatomova. It, it's like Iwamura's um, calcium oxide, blah, blah, blah. So we are yeah. literally synthesizing calcium oxide on the fly. And the, one, of the, one of the reactions that they do is that you get a cluster decay that produces two neutrons, which gives us the neutrons to make the silver, right? Mm -hmm. um, which are, you need a lot of neutrons to get to any stable isotope of zirconium. Yes, you, you can yeah. get the protons you need by fusing two calcium atoms, but then, you, you know, if you're doing two, you've got 80 and the first, first one's 90, you need another 10 neutrons from somewhere. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, it's, it, w w we're looking at the data and this is what we get. <laughs> and so, you mm -hmm. know, it must be synthesizing the neutrons and that provides the mechanism through which it's uh, providing, uh, producing the neutrons. It doesn't actually matter because this is a whole collapse. But to make an argument yeah. to someone who doesn't understand that this is an electronuclear collapse and it all happens instantaneously, trillions of atoms yeah. at the same time, then, then you can give them a stepwise process to, to make the argument. So um, mm -hmm. effectively you have, uh, um, what they cite is one where you, you, the, the, a neutrino comes in, which is birthed from the CNO cycle. And because we were burning in gas, yeah. because we were burning in air, you have two yep. things. One, you have the one in one in five atoms on the CaCO3 is carbon, right? And it's almost certainly right. carbon 12, no carbon 14, because it's, it's dead, dead carbon, as I call it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you have nitrogen in the air. So it part in, you have nitrogen 14 at the bottom of the CO cycle, CNO cycle, and you have oxygen. So nitrogen can, print, can yeah. be brought in. And if you take nitrogen 15, okay, and you do mm -hmm. the neutrinos, which are being synthesized in the process, you can do this neutrino iton reaction, which takes two neutrons away and, and, and jumps across the carbon-12, doesn't release the alpha, and moves it round to the unstable, unlikely to occur, but anyway, um, nitrogen-13. So you can synthesize two neutrons by still being within the CNO cycle, uh, but mm -hmm. using this itonic uh, move. And anyway, the point being is it's producing the neutrons. OK, yeah. So yeah. so um, uh, and also it's synthesizing potentially by taking calcium 42, which is accepted two neutrons. It synthesizes mm -hmm. carbon. So the, the reaction should be as long as there's calcium available, the calcium is effectively ad acting as a bit of a catalyst mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. synthesizing mm -hmm. carbon. So basically, if you've got if you've got um, tritium coming in, it produces prot proteum. Uh, or deuterons and calcium okay. 41 or calcium 42. If it synthesizes mm -hmm. calcium 42, uh, I mean, it's more likely to produce helium, but you need a neutrino involved. But if it synthesizes calcium 42 by taking the two neutrons and producing a hydrogen atom, yeah, and you end up with water, the calcium 42 then interacts with the neutrino and you get the production of these two neutrons. Um, which can go on and, and, and lead to heavier elements. And th the point being is this. Um, I think we've got all of the, the peer-reviewed papers necessary. We've got a long history. 
We've got Irimura's mm. Exp Ex Technology Explained by Matsumoto's Ex uh, Technology. We've got Matsumoto's very simple lead, potassium hydroxide and uh, water electrical discharges, mm -hmm. which is HHO. We have, mm -hmm. uh, we have um, the tungsten uh, explosion by uh, um, uh, Mizuno in water. Doesn't matter whether it's heavy water or not. I think it was light water. And that produced mm -hmm. calcium. But because of they're doing discharge in water, it's HHO. They're doing plasma discharge yeah. in water. It's HHO, yeah. right? So yeah. you, you have these things. And we've observed the... He's seeing ca ca carbon. Anyway, the, the point being is... Uh, how we can present ourselves, I don't believe, is anything more than consultants with, with what we know. So, sorry. <laughs> I think with what we know, we can only present ourselves as consultants. Yeah, continue. I'm saying as, uh, with what we know, we can only present yeah, ourselves yeah. consultants. Um, it, even if it was to use I your electrolyte, um, if it was to use your, <laughs> Sorry, what? I said it's even big enough. Uh, no, even if we're just consultant, it's, uh, it's a great step. No. Yeah. So, so th this is what I'd suggest um, is that we are. Sorry, you've you've gone. You've frozen. Is that my end or your end? I'm here. I'm okay. here. So I'm we've here. we've got a Jack Japanese a, a, a international problem that's hosted that that's in Japan. Um, yeah. And we we can solve it. With a Japanese with Japanese solutions with international help, yeah, and so you, you, yeah. you phrase yeah. it like that, um, mm -hmm. and uh, um, we, we've got the science in terms of the radiation monitoring. I, I hope I get something from Alexander. I don't mm -hmm. know because I don't get a return from him as as fast as I would like, but that's what yeah. he, that is his expertise. So it's kind of like it doesn't doesn't really matter what's necessary. He's going to know the solution. <laughs> <laughs> and and that that's yeah, why course. he agreed to be part of the the the, the team. Yeah. Um, and then I mean he he suggested use the Vachayev method, but the problem with the Vachayev method is you've got water going around in a loop, and you've got mm -hmm. dirty water, so you add add some carbon in there, and you do discharging. So it's just H H O, except you end up with really dirty water. And and yeah, so of course you have to filter it again, and you have a lot of problems with that. So you know that you you know get uh, sufficient. Uh, uh, you know, uh, purity in order to, to, uh, to continue the same efficiency and so. Yeah, the, the point about the electrolysis process is that um, the, the uh, process can be continuous. You, you may like to feed the water back in, but um, I, I suspect with the level of transmutation we're getting and because tritium really doesn't want to be tritium, <laughs> yeah, it already course. doesn't want it to do it. And it's, it's such a short half-life. That in, in uh, with the onslaught of the coherent matter and the cold neutrinos and whatever, it's just gonna it's just gonna transmute very very quickly, very yeah, quickly. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it, it's a but anyway. You have you have the, the the cycle, you know, for the electrolysis of water. Oh yeah. Uh, the tritium it go inside and just in the, the get a bigger concentration. So uh, at the end we can just take this part, you know, let a uh, lot of less water with just the um, greater concentration of tritium inside. So. Yeah, I mean, anyway. the, the first fractions to come off will be the proteum and, and the deuterium uh, disproportionately yeah. over the tritium, and you'll end up with an effluent that's higher tritium. Now, that might be something that you look to, to, to deal with vibration technology. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you, mm -hmm. you, you actually process that just through vibration. Um, yeah. And it might be the case... So, so now, the, the point is we have to put all of our egos to one side, um, the reality is, is that um, uh, Amaz's technology, I believe, is robust and very scalable. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's going to keep its low efficiency from beginning to end. <laughs> yeah, of course. Of and course. so, you know... I, I don't, I, I mean, I'm, I'm not, you know, <laughs> uh, looking uh, really to, to take the electrolysis, uh, like uh, HHO technology, just uh, to put in, in the, you know, in the, uh, in the process. But uh, Amaza is... Uh, as you said, it's um, uh, even for for the uh, uh, maintenance, uh, it's easier to you know replace a few plates when it was you know uh, yeah. completely uh, absolutely busted with the uh, 
with the uh, collapsing, you know. <laughs> yeah, and the vibration itself may uh, deal with some of the transmutation that's required. So, like you, you're yeah. getting a twofer. What one is happening as as it's producing the gas and and so forth. So, yeah. Um, now the thing is, is that um, uh, um, he's not going to be able to make them. His factory is not big enough. I think I think after the people that have died and and. Uh, not being able to take it forward is basically that, that's one that, that's one uh, that is something that wasn't clear to me is um even uh if he's using because uh i saw in one he of should the have a videos, bubble uh, he should have a bubbler on there anyway for whatever reason there was an explosion whatever reason oh, yeah. I, I i don't yeah. think we're going to have an easy answer for, out of that the the, the point mm -hmm. is is mm -hmm. that um uh sometimes it's good if you've had an explosion because you learn from it <laughs> yeah of course. of course i learned once i, I think uh, <laughs> it's enough <laughs> yeah yeah so um I, I didn't talk to you about this one no uh when we first tried to with the electrolysis uh we try we build uh, our first elect electrolyzer mm -hmm. and he was so uh, low efficiency we were waiting like uh, all afternoon to get uh, one liter of gas you know it's just like uh, <laughs> okay we're expecting that all the afternoon and uh, well, I don't know. It was something like 4 p.m. afternoon. Uh, I was just uh, wanted to try, you know, the try the explosion directly from the from the electrolyzer. But it's one of the uh, electrolyzers uh, like the, uh, looked like uh, from the um, uh, uh, Stanley Mayer, you know, with the tubes and uh, yeah, yeah. and we have some sort of maybe for one liter uh, space between you know the water and the the, the cover. So I just uh, run to the electrolysis, uh, electro electrolyzer and start just, you know, put the flame to see what's going on. If I, if it's going to blow up because we trusted with, you know, small amounts and it was less, like a small pot. But this one is, uh, you know, it's like a one, one liter gas. It's like, like a big explosion, in, you know, from maybe the, the ball was like uh, maybe one me meter diameter, you know, the explosion. <laughs> and I, I was like uh, the head inside. And it was a little bit scary, but um, my father was like uh, at the upstairs and just, he was running to see what's going on. And she said that he, he was, uh, instead of asking, are you okay? He was asking, why did you wait for me? I just want to see the explosion. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, it's, uh, you know, now, uh, you're a little bit I, I, just, I just lost you. you. Yeah. I just lost you. Say again. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. Okay. I said, I said that when you have these, when you have these, uh, you know, sort of experience, you, you just well, look what you're doing. So uh, you're a little bit more careful. Yeah. So I mean, so, I, I think the right partner is something like Mitsubishi, and, and so like, mm -hmm. I think if we don't particularly care who makes it, uh, um, but uh, we do care that we can do the tests. I think that for me, the big win out of this is, well, there's two big wins. One, well, three big wins. One, there is, there's a lot of big wins, of course, but um, the, the big win would be that um, the problem would be solved rather than distributed. <laughs> um, and and by, by virtue, I mean, one of the justifications, obviously, is that, well, we can do this because it's already being done everywhere else. Uh, as long as right. we, you know, as long as we release it at under the concentration that is allowed everywhere else, it's not the whole total volume that's the, that's the problem. Yeah, of course. Of it's course. just such a massive yeah. amount. But they're saying, well, everyone yeah. else is releasing it as long as it's below this concentration, it's permissible. And really, it yeah. want, you want to flip that argument on the head and make it so that, you know, rather than it being permissible, you want to say, now there's a solution, people should be doing this, and they will be leaders in the technology. And so, yeah. so um, there's that. Then, then there is uh, um, the fact that that, that cold fusion uh, or the ability to transmute matter will be have to be accepted, and that is mm -hmm. the hugest win um, yeah. that you can possibly imagine. And that probably yeah. is our biggest barrier for it to be applied. <laughs> yeah, actually. Yeah. And then yeah. the, the the third the third is is that you know, your contribution will, will mean that, you know, I help deliver this technology and, and therefore you can sell that in every, any which way you can. 
<laughs> I'm completely uh, in accordance with that. Uh, I mean, that's uh, that's the only you know uh, expectation <laughs> I'm looking for. So it's okay for me, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the reality is, is, is uh, if it hasn't already expired, um, Amaz's technology patent is from 2001, so it's it's got to expire soon. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't, uh, I don't know if it can, uh, you know, uh, uh, how you said, uh, prolongate the uh, the uh, the validity of the the patents. I don't know. No, if it's, can, it's 20 years, uh, and the the. the, the the thing is, he would need to change something significant that makes it a new invention. And the, yeah. the problem is, he's he's never um, he's never claimed that it's transmuting matter. He's claiming that the vibrator is transmuting matter. And the reason he was doing that, by the way, is because he could get a new patent on it. Yeah, yeah. But if if the gas is just doing what it could always do, then the t the actual patent is for the apparatus, and and it doesn't it, that produces a certain That's amount of gas. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you, you can't necessarily patent a new app. It's like I've got a patent on the first car and uh, most people were using it to travel to and from the countryside. But someone wanted to use it to travel to work. Now I want a new patent on the car. And it's like, yeah, right. uh, yeah. not really. It's not going to happen. Not going to fly that not one. Really. <laughs> yeah, of course. Of course. Um, now, it's not obvious yeah. necessarily that you would use an HHO gas to do transmutation. But it is because it's already been done by your brown. <laughs> so yeah, there's exactly. basically nothing patentable about that. So he's in a situation where what he has is what I have, which is what you have, which is expertise. Uh, it's, yeah. it's, it's understanding of the various aspects of, of this process. And that's yeah. the same yeah. with, with, um, with uh, uh, Alexander. You know, he, he has as understandings with the sort of neutrino side of things and, and radiation monitoring. So so th then the question comes is, what kind of uh, organization are we? If it's under the umbrella of the MFMP, then that's relatively easy. It's, it's, it's independent researchers that have come together as a consortium to yep. use yep. our respective knowledge to fix this problem. And mm -hmm. various tests are being conducted. Uh, they point to the fact that it's a real technology that Bre Yul Brown discovered, um, but he never showed, or there is mm -hmm. certainly no public data of the transmutations that he claims. But we have observed, and other parties have observed without realizing it, that it was HHO that they were doing, even if they were making it and burning it instant instantaneously. Um, and that our data is consistent with that. And... Um, that, you know, I, I believe that I can't I, personally, I cannot think of a better solution than chopping out lumps of mountain and burning gas up against it. I can't can't think of that. Mm -hmm. It's just it's yeah. so trivial. Um, yeah. But, you know, someone else can work out how many jets need to be there and whether you're cutting the slices. It, I mean, you can chuck this rock. I mean, it's like really nice sheets of it because you know they also use it for doing more marble for walls and flooring and you can get these pieces in like you know, some of the pieces are kind of like three meters long by two meters wide. I mean, they're massive sheets. And you would just have mm -hmm. some sort of roller system that goes under, under, and it might roll there and roll back. And, and if it's producing, if it is producing silver on the top, all you do is you have a skimmer. And so you start off with a block yeah. that's about a meter well, you thick. Can, you, you can peel it off uh, directly yeah. while you're know, passing through. Or something. Yes, exactly. So you, you have, you cut out a block. So if you look at their website, they've got blocks that are like, you know, there might be one meter by one meter by three meters. And you have one of these yeah. and it just rolls backwards and forwards with the jets on it. And you just yeah, skim yeah. off the top at the end. Yeah. yeah. Is, is yeah. So I, I don't I, know whether... After, after that is just, you know, the uh, uh, technology of, you know, um, many tensioning uh, the... Um, all the things uh, and well, you, you, know. you could just have all the jets above and have it gravity it just sits on its own rollers on the top of the block yeah, yeah. so so as as the block gets thinner it just drops down in the chamber and that's it i mean it's so freaking simple and then you you, you take off the uh the silver <laughs> you just take off the silver yeah so you say send send us three meters cubed of uh, of uh, yeah. calcium carbonate and and we'll we'll send you back some silver for, for for buying it we'll send you back a bit of the silver we make <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, of course, you know, that, that needs to be verified. But the, 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 uh, what I was saying earlier is, is that the reaction when you have the neutrino coming in, the, uh, in interacting with calcium-42, it not only produces the two neutrons, it also does a clustered decay of carbon. So you're synthesizing carbon. This might explain why in that data we're seeing the carbon goes down, but then it goes back up again, even as more calcium is produced and, and more silver is produced. So it might be that yeah. it's synthesized as, as it's going through synthesizing neutrons. Yeah. It's yeah. also doing this loop back round and some of the calcium is becoming carbon and that goes through to nitrogen and so on. So it's actually... All the carbon, all the carbon is not used in the you know, CN, uh, CNO uh, cycle. So you, you produce the carbon. The carbon is coming from fissioning, clust cluster fissioning calcium. Yeah, but... Uh, yeah, calcium. But in the, and do in you know the what type... you get? You get, you know what you get? Silicon 28. And that would explain our silicon 28 line. So you've got two mm -hmm. paths to silicon. You've got carbon and oxygen that's in there. Or you've got fissioning yeah. of, of, cal uh, of calcium 40 to silicon and, yeah. and uh, carbon. All in once, yeah. So, of course. so it, what I'm saying is that the, the whole thing's very stable. Because if you've got extra energy and it's, it's got more compression, it's going to synthesize calcium. If, yeah. If, yeah. If, it, if it's producing more neutrinos, then it produces more carbon and silicon. It's kind of like, yeah. it's a stable thing there. And, and, and if it's really driving it hard, because there's a lot of neutrons available, it's going to synthesize the silver. And so I predict mm -hmm. that the, the production of heavier elements will yeah. be far, far, much faster with, and the water isn't, I assume, just tritium laced. I imagine for every atom of tritium, there's a, a, a maybe even an order of magnitude higher number of um, deuterium atoms. Deuterium, yeah. Yeah. Because if you think about it, this water is sitting next to the nuclear reactor. It's throwing out neutrons. Some of the water, which is HHO, will become DD, DHO or, or D, DDO. And yeah. some of those deuterons will then be made into tritons. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, well, we don't have the analysis of this water, so, you know. No, but the other advantage is that something that none of the other solutions deal with is that if there are any other beta isotopes in there as residual from the ALPS process, this should also remediate them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think anyway, that's worth, that, that is worth drumming home because none of the other solutions, not one of them, deal with that. And it might yeah. even be the case that moving forward, they can remove the ALPS system. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, All mm -hmm. of the costs associated with ALPS could be removed. And it literally, you take the effluent and you, you electrolyze it and you run. Yeah. Um, you use it directly as a fuel for, for, the, for the rest of the, yeah. the process. And it might even be that you actually spray water onto the calcium carbonate at the same time, or mist it on, which is the, mm -hmm. the highly toxic water. And you use the HHO burning on the calcium carbonate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that should be, uh, you know, uh, tested. But uh, of course, the, the, the mist is uh, one of the. Uh, um, I saw a few experiences with uh, with uh, water uh, in form of mist uh, between the electrodes, and very very explosive. Uh, just like uh, you know, you don't have much energy to put in in the uh, to obtain the, the you know the same uh, uh, energy out as in it, I, I, but what you're water. talking what you're talking about there is water arc dis, when you have a very high didt discharge you're producing a lot of evos and uh, they go through the water and that they they are um, gaining energy by cohering that water what i with, without with the solution that i'm proposing is you have your your um, coherent matter formed right. from the from the That's jet right. mm -hmm. and then you have a mist of the more toxic water descending yeah. down into that area mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. but anyway we'll, we'll we'll talk that can just be as an aside um that the focus is on obviously on on yeah, yeah, of course. Of course. uh fixing the tritium water but from your calculation which is very close to my 30 megawatt calculation that i did earlier in the year just off the top of my head um you're looking at um uh, about one and a half megawatts an hour to meet their minimum threshold and that yeah, is yeah. that has to be ridiculously doable. You can do it with a diesel generator. Of course, of course. And so there's there's a good potential that you would produce fairly high high pressure steam. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, if, 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 if the temperature of the mass of the material is, mm -hmm. uh, and the surface area is about 1,700 degrees Kelvin, oh, sorry, 2,000 degrees Kelvin to 2,200 yeah. degrees Kelvin, mm -hmm. that is high pressure steam that could then be run through a turbine. Of course. Um, and would that produce one and a half megawatts? I don't know, but the nuclear reactions would suggest that it's going to produce a lot of energy. <laughs> yeah. um, well, yeah, we'll have uh, all technology needed for that, you know. So, uh, yeah, I'm not even saying. I'm not even, as I as I've said in my my proposal, yeah. it, or rather, I'm suggesting it would be just yeah. you would use normal air turbine based energy generation methods to recover that energy. Uh, yeah, and yeah. it may be a self self supporting process, and and so th that's almost that's, all that needs to be said at that point for that part of it. That will be just fantastic. So you have some so safe, sustainable system that is, uh, you know, remediating everything. And uh... well, from from my point of view, and probably from a technologist's point of view, not to generate a whole lot of other hot equipment. Yeah, you wouldn't even bother doing that because one and a half megawatts is neither here nor there. It's, mm. it's just not a lot of energy. So yeah, yeah, if, yeah. if that's what you need to per hour to deal with the problem, then just to simplify it, you wouldn't even bother doing the re energy recovery. Um, yeah. But, you, I mean, you, you could find that uh, you could heat a lot of water for whatever purpose you needed it for, rather, rather than converting it to steam. You, you, you might need a lot of cooling water. <laughs> yeah, of yeah. Um, well, yeah, of the, the other thing that I'm thinking about is, you know, maybe you do need the nitrogen and it might just be sufficient to inject air into the process. And then, mm -hmm. then you've got a problem of extra gas involved. Unless that's mm -hmm. captured into solid or liquid material, then that's a problem in its own right. Um, mm -hmm. If you can completely close loop it and it would appear that there's nitrogen there now is it is it genuinely synthesized from either carbon in the material going through the cno cycle or or carbon um that's synthesized going through the from from fission of of um uh calcium i kind of my gut feeling is the calcium yep. doesn't want a fission <laughs> but yep, if, if you've got if you've got lighter elements it might do it might do because that's typically what this system does it reorganizes everything and and you get a lot of alpha and you get a lot of carbon um so it may well do so the carbon may be there and the nitrogen is just part of that cno cycle and so you don't need to add nitrogen in it can effectively be a closed system and that that mm -hmm. would be kind mm -hmm. of ideal um you would obviously get a build up of effluent which would potentially include um the potassium that's synthesized the only other thing is the helium. But if it produces a lot of helium, well, my God, that's a valuable product as well. Of course. There's, of course. there's, no, there's, no, there's no decent method of producing a lot of helium. Most of the helium in the world, do you know where it comes from? From the uh, thermal, uh, thermonuclear reactions. No, no. It comes from that which was captured off gas wells. In the head of the gas well, you get all this helium. And, and so it's been stored, and it's in the U.S. strategic reserve of helium. Holy oh, shit. So okay. when you get your helium <laughs> balloon, it comes out of gas wells. Okay. No one's making the helium, but like I say, the, and, and if, uh, I think it produces three helium. Uh, let me just ch check that. If it produces he three helium, that's an unimaginably good nuclear... Uh, fusion fuel, nuclear. a safe nuclear exactly. fusion fuel. Um, where is it? Um, uh, uh, is it? Two to two reactions. Uh, so do you have um, do, do you have um, uh, information? Uh, by the way, the the uh, the. Uh, the uh, the document you have to show for the proposal. Uh, I have the translation you, for that. I've got the translation. I sent it to you by email. Yeah. Or what? What are you referring to? Something else? 
No, no, no. The, the, the one that you have to send to to the uh, nine, uh, yeah, we call the nine sigma. Or... I no, I think you can submit the... it in English. Oh, okay, okay. okay. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be submitting it in English. Yeah, um, I think you can submit it in English as well, definitely. Um, and uh, and entry in. Um... Uh, no, it, it all produces four helium, but that's fine. <laughs> that's okay. It, if it produces four helium, that's okay. Because <laughs> that's that's something you can sell. So the, 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 the helium will be the lightest gas other than the isotopes of hydrogen. Um, but the, the yeah, isotopes yeah. of hydrogen you can capture into water. So you can use, you can use a... a um, you can use a platinum catalyst to um, reform that. And then the, the mm -hmm. stuff that comes out of the platinum catalysts that obviously hasn't been reformed into water, that, mm -hmm. that is your helium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, so yes, some of your hydrogen and oxygen will not burn and you would use that process to get rid of it and separate out the helium. Um, Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah i think helium's like the one of the top products it's a i think it's the second reaction that where is it if i'll get rid of that it's the it's the one that produces potassium 39 so yeah so okay so um okay that's the first one that doesn't involve a cold neutrino is tritium and calcium 40 produces helium and potassium 39 so i would imagine your effluent would get um well, I mean, if, if the potassium it doesn't become a hydroxide, which I expect it will, but if it does, doesn't, then it would stay there. But if it does, then it's going to become uh, very alkaline, the process. But if it, it, yeah. if it does, then you could have a situation where you mix the effluent with the water coming in and you don't even need to add the electrolyte. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> uh, do, we, do we need to, to do the proposals for the oil? All the, the the system, uh, all the for the all, all process. How I, I think what I'm going to do is a rough system. a rough sketch, and it's basically a bloody great block that goes backwards and forwards uh, with with a a, a multiplicity of uh, jets, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that that is gravity fed. The the water that's produced is gravity fed. The effluent, you know. Um, would be treated in ways you would expect to treat it. Um, it should, like yeah. I said, it should be potassium rich. Um, there should be yeah. some um, whatever. And, and, and I think you just keep it like that. You say n normal processes um, for energy extraction may be used. Uh, otherwise, it would need to be cooled. Um, yeah. Yeah. You, you, you would need to reform yeah. any residual hydrogen, oxygen, and, uh, and capture any maybe for the extraction gas extraction you know for, for the produced gas yeah like there is a... yeah so you, you, you would reform the water and that would go around the loop um uh and you you would uh you would um uh capture the helium so i mean conceivably you could get uh two very valuable products out of this helium and silver yeah, yeah. um uh, but uh, I, obviously, the the first win is is to get the silver. Uh, so, sorry, get the get the tritium dealt with. And uh, the fact that yeah. what's very encouraging to me is that uh, you know tritium very much preferentially wants to interact with the calcium over and above deuterium and and hydrogen. So if you mm -hmm. if you have one third of the fraction of water or or a, a smaller percentage of the water is actually tritium that comes from the electrolyzed material then that is the fraction that's most likely to do the nuclear reactions um in in, in the the system so yeah so okay so I, I think we're kind of all like on the same page I, my kids are off on holiday and we basically have till tomorrow okay. evening okay. to write no this problem proposal. we have basically till tomorrow evening to write okay. this proposal that's it. Well, uh, as I said, if you need anything, uh, I'm yeah. here. Yeah. Just, uh, just ask. I, I, I think, uh, um, okay. 
I, I think I just need to go through my presentations in the series and pull out the paper references. They, they want to know mm -hmm. that the people that have made these claims, they are in peer reviewed journals, you know, so, so I'm, I'm picking out that US Air Force 1993 submitted document that's saying this ball lightning could deliver, you know, fusion. And then mm -hmm. contemporaneously, yeah, yeah. you have Matsumoto saying, this is ball lightning. Uh, and uh, then yeah. I, I think the whole picture is very, very consistent. And then we have the data to back it up. All, all we haven't done is to be able yeah, to test yeah. tritium. That's it. And so I think that the, the, what I said in, in the, the email to people was, we basically got to say, um, you know, we, we'd like to have the opportunity to test this. And, uh, you know, if it doesn't mm -hmm. deliver, mm -hmm. then we can walk away. But the, the test is yeah. not complicated. Yeah. You know, and Mars has got a device. It can be done at his location or on site, preferably on site. They probably don't want the tritium water being shipped around everywhere. Um, of course. And, uh, you know, I, I can bring the calcium carbonate. It doesn't need to be big. <laughs> we, ju we just need to do a, a, a simple test um, to, um, with a known volume of gas sorry, known volume of water, mm -hmm, even mm -hmm, if it's mm -hmm. just like 100 litres and, and you run it through a cycle mm -hmm. and then you test the yep. radioactivity of the residual water in the electrolyzer, the, the re radioactivity of the um, fraction that's produced and, and so on. Um, yeah. And that's, that's basically it. And the calcium oxide doesn't, you, you can use heat to drive off any water from the calcium oxide. So if it isn't nuclear bound into the calcium oxide, you can recover the water from it by heat. Yeah. So you don't mm -hmm. end up with something that's contaminated with tritium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because hydrogen isn't part of calcium carbonate. <laughs> it's CaCO3. Yeah, yeah. So, so well, you can you can uh, you can stock uh, you know uh, CaO. CAO, uh, you know, separately. You, well, your 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 product that is comes from it isn't a compound that that stores hydrogen. Isn't what I'm saying. Even if silicon is formed, it's SiO two. It's you're not getting the the hydrogen isotope in there. It's recoverable, and and then at the end of the mm -hmm. process, you have calcium oxide, which will suck carbon dioxide out of the air and become calcium carbonate again of its own accord. So it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's really yeah. kind of acting like a catalyst uh, and where it's not acting as a mm -hmm. catalyst, a catalyst is acting as a, in my view, a, a base on which um, coherent matter can form. That's basically it, ball lightning, and that's it. All right, so I, th I think we're on, in terms, in terms of being able to deliver a solution, I think we've got, as I said in, in my presentation on Sunday, I actually think we've got all the data we need. I mean, we could yeah, have asked yeah. for a better situation with the fact that it's producing exactly the quantum coherent structures with, with the radial waves and the, the, the waves on the waves, which were identified by Solin. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just, that's, because I couldn't, I couldn't see an easy crystal structure of calcium carbonate or calcium oxide that would look like that. And when I saw it's only like mm -hmm. on a surface layer, it's not through the bulk. It, it is something yeah. that's traveling as a wave across the surface and it's literally completely changing the material its structure its arrangement um yeah uh it's a thing of great beauty it really is i mean it's uh i'm i'm very happy to have that image and you know uh, um you know you, you you you've got it or you will have it um yeah. I think it's just a thing of great beauty. Anyway, so th thank you for your testing or for having me over. No uh, I, you know, what I found with I this mean, process is sometimes it looks like you haven't gone anywhere and then you find out you've done everything you needed. But you yeah. have to bother looking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's a completely correct. Uh, the, the, all the, the experiments, it's nothing like a one-minute experiment, but uh, all the work is like, uh, you know, yeah. hours and then. Work, yeah. It is nice that, that, that you can see how long that test stood on because it's all on camera. You can literally see exactly how long it is. Yeah, yeah. Just 
few seconds. <laughs> and that's all you need to show. You, that's all you need to show. Exactly. And for, from my point of view, the not having to make anything other than a basically a, 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 nothing more complicated than the kind of containers they've been making to store the water anyway. I mean, you just mm -hmm. want to you want to make a sealed container that allows a thing to go backwards and forwards in it. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, oh, oh, and your substrate, you don't even have to refine it. You're just, you're just chopping it out of a mountain. <laughs> That's it. <Yeah. laughs> Done. All right, mate. Uh